Trillion. Look at my shoes, it's you, man. Designer on our body. Fanny, Louis, and Prada. The leather is snake, Matilda and Fern. We can be coke, Patrick and Burn. Look at the ice, water is clear. You could just search. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to my Let's Make an Open World RPG. Don Haven, in this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys something pretty cool that I've in, um, not invented but scripted. Um, it's also going to help you guys that are trying to achieve what I have achieved with a big map. Um, let me just go ahead and copy this um, script call real quick. And then I'll show you guys what that does. Um, and then I'll explain to you guys exactly how um, I did it. So, um, imagine you're in the open world, um, usually, you know, um, if you have a whole bunch of events on one map, the map will lag. So, the way I had the game set up before is I had all the, um, enemy events and, and monsters and stuff all in one map, and then they will spawn to the location that I want them to once you enter that map. Um, that did a couple of things. One, it introduced lag. And two, let me also get rid of this. Um, it introduced lag. Well, that's the main thing I actually did. Um, is the lag, and so, um, I got my. I found the script, and I believe it's by Yen Fly. The script is pretty much a script that spawns events from a different map to a different map. Um, so using that script, I kind of made my own script that spawns enemies um, as you move around the world. So that way, I don't have to keep all the events on one map, and I could just spawn them in um, as needed. So let me... Add... Um, this is meant to be used in the overworld map. I'm using it in this testing hall, um, so it kind of glitched out on me. But pretty much the principle are um, that, as you can see, the enemies are popping in. There goes a lion, a bear, a rabbit. If we give it a second, a deer, another wolf. They're going to keep popping in until this place is fully... Um, well, the way it's set up right now, they're going to just keep on popping in forever. So imagine this, but in the um, overworld, obviously it won't be happening this fast. Um, I just have this event over there spawning them every 60 frames. So as you can see, that's, now obviously it will still lag my game if um, too many of them spawn at one time. That's why I have a limit uh, of every time you enter the open world, um, it limits it to either um, a range of between 25 and 50 so 25 and 50 monsters can spawn at one time which before um it's a lot better than before because um i had like over 100 events on that one map where now i can have um between 25 and um and 50 and rarely is going to populate the whole 50 um before you zone out and then come back in so this is the script here that controls everything. Um, I'm, I'm going to be posting this. It's a snippet that obviously works with. Um, let me go ahead and show you the main script. So this is Yen Fly um, Engine A Spawn Event. Um, a couple of modifications. I just set it to the default. I just set the default map to 49, which is the testing hall here, because that's the map where everything will be spawned from. By default, I believe it just made it to whatever map that you're currently on. And I did that so when I use this command right here, I could just use event location XY and I could just leave um I could just leave the map ID out and I don't have to, you know, mention the map. It will just always point to 49. Now, using this script call in mind, um, and all it pretty much does is um, it spawns the event. Um, I use that, and I pretty much made my own um, method over here called spawn encounter, which is what we were using to spawn those enemies. 
um, if you look down here, spawn event location, that's the same thing as the, the, the method that we copied over. Um, so pretty much to explain what this does is, the first thing it does is um, it finds what region that the player is standing on. Um, this I have to move out of here because the way it's set up now, this pretty much um, every time this uh, script call is called, it sets a new limit. So I have to fix that. So I already know. Um, and then here we have a pool of enemies. All the enemies that will spawn on grass goes into this array. All the enemies that spawn by uh, in snow here, desert, and by the water. Um, and then what I did is I made another uh, variable and I set that to random. And then to get um, the actual number to use for the randomization, I just used the, the enemy pool and then I just got the size of it. So for example, if there was 20 items here, then that number would be 19 because it starts at um, 0 all the way to 19, making it 20. So it would do random 19, right? And then whatever comes up, the 19 spot in here will be the number it pulls out. So for example, if this ran and it got, uh, and then the random number is like 19, and then let's say it runs it and then it picks 5 out of that 19, then it will go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the fifth. Um, enemy or the fifth event ID, which will be 13, will be what gets spawned into the world. So that's what this section does. And I do it for all the individual pools that we have. Next, um, I, um, I make a variable XPX and XPY, which pretty much tracks exactly where the event will be spawned. Right now, I have it set to 2-2. Two, two, so the... Um, uh, so the events get spawned right next to the player. But usually in the open world, what I do is I use this whole um thing right here to make it so the enemy spawns just outside or outside of your um, field of view when it spawns. So that way you either run into the enemy or it's just somewhere on the outskirts and or like, you know, so it doesn't look like it just spawned out of nowhere. Um... And I'm actually going to put that back the way it was. Also, ran neg5 and ran neg sign 9. Um, those are methods that I made myself. They're up here. And all pretty much all those um, do is the random negative will pretty much um, get a random negative. So let's say if you put 5 there, it will get a random number between negative five and positive five um and then random next sign what whatever number you put in there it would randomly turn it into a positive or negative and that's so um that way you could either have the enemy spawn to the right left up or down of the player so it's not just one-sided right then the next step is i pretty much check hey spawn region um, this pretty much checks the region that this will be that the enemy is supposed to spawn to. So that's what spawn region does. Um, and then I do some pretty um, simple things over here. So I do a, a condition branch. Um, and then I do current spawn count. So every time an enemy gets spawned, um, it adds one to the spawn count. And then the spawn counts get set when whenever you leave the map. Um it gets reset. That's why I made it into a uh, a class variable. Well, actually, not a class variable, but um, object variable, or whatever it's called. I forgot. As you can see right here, it gets reset to zero. That's also where I should be changing the limit, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm bringing back over there. Um, this limit. That's um, I'm gonna call it over there. But for now, um, it checks to make sure that it's not bigger than limit. If it's not bigger than limit, so that means that there's less than 25, um, um, 50 enemies on the map, then it's going to check, hey, can you spawn this enemy? And can spawn all that is really is, it just checks that, hey, the coordinate that you're spawning this enemy at, is it passable? So is it a water? Is it a grass tile? Is it a rock? Or if it's an obstacle, it won't spawn. If it is 
not an obstacle, then it will spawn. So if it's in like grass or like you know somewhere that you can walk in, and then the last um the last thing, which pretty much um I use this section in order to because if I don't include this, then the enemies will technically spawn anywhere, right? So let's say I was walking um and I'm by a building, technically, um one. Technically, the enemy can spawn on a passable tile that they're not supposed to pass um, go on to. So let me show you an example because I know that's kind of complicated. So let's say, for example, we go to Castle Banshee over here, right? The enemies aren't supposed to spawn like right here or right here, but they can spawn on the grass tiles. But technically, you can walk over here, right? So... To fix that, I pretty much only make the enemies spawn where the regions are. So, they're not supposed to spawn over here. Um, and then later on, I'm obviously going to go through and, you know, clear these up. But it wouldn't really matter because even if it's not cleared up, they still can't spawn right there because that's not a passable tile. Um, so, this way, they can only spawn... Either on a region or, well, either, well, they have to spawn on a region that matches the region that the player is standing on. And also, ha um, the, the tile has to be passable. So that's pretty much what this does. So that's what this two section does. Right? And then after that, um, everything is the same. And all it does is it just spawns the enemy. Spawn event location. That's what we took from the spawn uh, event spawner. We added our, our own SPS and SPY, which we assigned over here. Um, enemy pool, which is this. And then it took whatever value this, um, whatever this evaluated to, it took that value. So if it, um, if it was, let's say, 2, then this would be a 2. And then whenever it spawns an enemy, it will spawn... Zero, one, two. It will spawn enemy twenty-two. Um. So yeah, that's pretty much how it, what this does and how it works. Um. So let me go to the overworld now and kind of show you. Oh, actually, the last thing too. And I have this being called on the um common event. All it does is checks that your map ID one. If you're if you're on map ID one, then it will run a random variable. That's a twenty. Um. Actually. There's a 75% chance an enemy will spawn and a 25% chance that they will not spawn. Then it will wait minimum 200 frames. That's what this section does. It will wait minimum 200 frames plus a random 1,000 frames. So the lowest frames that it could um, wait for is 200, but it could wait all the way up to 1,200 frames. Um, and then this, when you leave the map, obviously it sets the counter back to zero. So the whole process can start off again. So let me actually fix this now that you guys are here. I'm going to go ahead and turn this limit into this. I'm also going to take this out from here. Find where I have the limit, which is here. Add that dollar sign, control F, limit, just make sure. Okay, I got everything from limit. So I don't need it to assign limit every single time the event runs. I just need limit to be assigned one time. So what I'm going to do is every time you leave the map, it would assign a new limit, meaning, so let's say, for example, the old limit is 50, and then suddenly 50 enemies spawn where by you. When you leave the map, it will set it to a different um, limit. So now it would be, let's say, 30. When you go back into the open world, only 30 enemies will spawn. When you leave the map, it will change it to a new spawn limit. Now maybe 40 enemies will get spawned, and then when you go back to the open world, that limit will, you know, always be whatever this limit is and it will only be changed when you leave the map so let's go ahead and test that out actually let me put myself actually it doesn't matter where i start i can always just re-teleport or just continue game
uh, the game is lagging a lot right now, but that's because of the recording software, not because of regular lag. Because usually when I'm playing, I get around 58 FPS ever since I changed this. Before, I used to get around 48 to 52. So, oh, an enemy just spawned. Here it is, over here. So, if you keep an eye over here to the left, <clears throat> I have a little console command just to help me along. So, it spawned enemy 24, uh, 4 at the coordinate, and then it spawned it on region. And then the 1 versus 1 means I'm on region 1, and it just spawned it on region 1. If um if the spawn location wasn't on region one, it won't. Well, if the enemy doesn't spawn at all, this console command won't even show up. So um, before I had it showing up, um, whether uh if it spawned or not, just to see if things were working. But as you can see, those got spawned in. Some other enemies spawned in, but I don't know exactly where they are. I just know that. They are around this location. Oh, there goes a bunny. There goes that. I think there's like one more thing. But as you can see, as I'm walking around, things get spawned. Um, if we go ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, I think I'm going to be releasing this if anyone needs it. Uh, let me know. It's just a pretty, um, it's just a snippet that pretty much just lets you spawn enemies into the world. And it pretty much, um, again, based on which um, region ID that you obviously want to use. Let's see if we can get some more to spawn. Another one just spawned around somewhere. But yeah. So, they spawn. Sometimes you run into them when they spawn. Sometimes you don't run into them when they spawn. Um, like, another one just spawned, but it's somewhere. Sometimes they spawn just outside of your screen. Sometimes they spawn outside of your screen. So, it all depends. Snake just spawned over there. So, if you didn't know, um, you know, that the enemies were spawning in from a different map, you would think they were already on this map, the way it's set up. So, yeah. The only thing, though, is there's a minor lag when the enemy actually spawns in, but it lasts for, like, a split second. So, that's going to be the next thing I, I figure out how to fix. The ogre doesn't spawn in, it's just always... Um, world in the world somewhere so that one doesn't count but yeah thank you guys again for watching uh yeah this is the unarmed combat so you can use your hand to fight how that works is um let me show you too this is pretty cool well not really cool but it's pretty simple so let me go get myself a sword right here so, if I go here and I equip a sword, you see how I equip the unarmed um, whatever? Now, if I go into here, as you can see, it's no longer in my inventory. Even if I go here, it's not in my inventory. It's nowhere to be found. But then, let's say I unequip this, right? And I leave this menu. Guess what? It's back. It's back, and then you could see it again. And then if I come in here, and then let's say I unequip this, right? But you can unequip it because it's unarmed. It's your bare hands. But as long as you equip something else, it's going to disappear from your inventory. So you can't sell it or anything like that. But the second you don't have anything equipped, then it's gonna come back um but yeah the other thing i added was um let's see let's go to my real quick let me show you guys cool stuff i also kind of changed changed up the the layout for the weapons and stuff i added spears
So they work the same way as swords. The only difference is their range is longer. Uh, and you can't if you can't hit something directly in front of you. Like this will hit past that fence and hit anything that's behind the fence. It also has a little combo that does two hits. If I there you go. That combo right there. And the sword obviously changes. Oh, Tiger just spawned in. Let's go. Oh, I killed that guy by accident. Hmm, I didn't mean to. So weak. See, I'm trying to hit the, 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 the tiger, but I can't hit him because he's right there by the by the um But it's a good weapon though because it's it's good for like multiple enemies at one time. Or if you could like let's say position and it's very powerful too and it could keep people, you know, away from you. I was also thinking about making it throwable. As long as I could get them, there we go. And obviously it hits multiple enemies, so if there was like two enemies behind that girl, they will all get hit. Oh, maybe I could try it here. So that's why you would use this over the arm um, versus the sword. Because it gives you that combo that could hit up to three tiles away. But yeah. Um, I'm thinking of adding new um, weapon types. Maybe some claws. Maybe a different type of range weapons and stuff like that. Um, this spear. Uh, I think eventually I'm going to make it also hit this, the tile like right in front of the player. And just make it a full um, three section um, hit. Because I kind of want to make it a little bit more challenging than the sword. By adding the strategy where like you can't hit directly like in front of the player. Um, but I, I think it kind of looks a little wonky. But who knows. Well, let me know what you guys think. But for now, we're about to leave. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I'm going to try to make more videos for you guys. Uh, the game is coming along pretty good. Uh, if you guys want to play the game, the link to play is down below. Join my Patreon. It's only a dollar a month to play the game. Test it out. Give me some feedback. Also, if you want me to add you into the game as an NPC, join my Patreon. It's only a dollar. I'm also talking to a guy that's going to replace all the, um, the assets in the game. Well, not all the assets. All the graphics in the game. So the game is going to be looking different very soon. Which I'm excited for that. Um, I'm trying to raise a little bit of money so I can add that into what I use to hire um, someone on Fiverr to do the work. Also, if you're an artist and you're willing to help me with the game for free, contact me. You feel me? Let's let's work. Um, let's work. This game, I've been working on it for 10 years plus. I will finish it by fire by force because this game is pretty darn good. Even without as much content as I want in the game, it's still enjoyable. I could still sink in a good one, actually a good three hours into this game when I um the the, the storyline straight. Uh yeah. Also adding some side quests maybe tonight, tomorrow, next week. I'm gonna be releasing a new version. Please make sure to subscribe to my Patreon because the more subscribers I have, the more money the game makes. The more money the game makes, the better the game turns out because we can put all that money into the game. But yeah, guys, appreciate you guys. Thank you. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like. Make sure you comment. Make sure you like. Make sure you dislike if you don't like it, which I don't know why, but like.